Hello, Billy the Artist here, and today we are back with another How to Draw, but a crest. We're doing Gryffindor. So, we're doing some nice easy stuff after doing portraits. There was Dobby. This was quite a complex one, but we're going to do the individual houses. We're going to do Gryffindor, then Slytherin, then Hufflepuff, then Ravenclaw. Now, that's quite good, but there is also How to Draw Dobby. Uh, and we also have How to Draw Harry, Ron and Hermione. So all the links are in the card, so like and subscribe for more videos to be updated when more How to Draw, but How to Draw Harry Potty, Potter videos, Potty, I'm Potty about drawing, uh, will be online. Uh, but do check out that, the list is in the cards at the top and in the description of the, the links to the playlist and the individual videos. But do check them out and do share them out to Harry Potter fans. So these are more complex, but doing these are the basic building blocks that I do these with as well. So that'll be quite good for you to check out and enjoy. And there's some from Fantastic Beasts. And you've asked for other characters like Dra Draco, Malfoy, and uh, the old Dumbledore. There's the young Dumbledore done. I will get to them through this year. I've got a lot planned and other how to draw videos to do. So that's good. But we're going to crack on with how to draw the Gryffindor crest. So here we have our paper, it's A4. I'm using white hot pressed because I'm going to do, like on the other one, use the felt tip pen uh, to build that in. But I'm going to use the 2B pencil at first. Now these grid lines on the screen you can see, it's an A4 piece of paper, 210 mil by 297 down the side. And then these lines are put on at the marking points across and down the side. It's in uh, across the bar, across the bottom, will have shown up at some point and you can check that out and I'll, if I remember, I'll put them in the description as well. Anyway, thank you for pointing out that I missed where these lines are, but these are to help you to draw. Now, originally I used to just do a cross in the middle and just use the squares. How to draw anything, part one, shows you how you can draw anything just using these boxes. Now, as you can see, these lines are quite dark. Uh, so you can see them, but you don't have to do them as dark as I do. You can do them lightly, and then when you rub out, it's, you don't have to press on as hard. So anyway, now what we're going to do is I am going to put a large rectangle in there. And you can see how far under it comes and over. So I've got a large rectangle down there. Even though that's curved for that Gryffindor, I've just done a full rectangle. Now I'm doing a rectangle for the G. And you might hear drumming and children playing and making noises and all kinds of stuff because I've got to have my window open. So the G is going to go there. The F of Gryffindor is going to come in somewhere down. So I'm just indicating a little couple of lines. I'll build on them in a little bit. Now, I've put that box in first, so you've got the corner point there of the Gryffindor name going across the front of the shield. Now I'm going to put in the curve so that when we put his paws in, and that's going to go right the way across as well. Now the top again is curved and comes to this point and it follows the same kind of arc. So I'm doing them early just so that the other boxes that come on will be absolutely fine. So now what we want to do is draw a line down there and we've got you can see another rectangle right at the top and then we've got another rectangle on this side there and we can draw a line down comes down to where the top of the Gryffindor box is. Now on the side we just want a little circle and that is those little flourishes on the side and we've got a little V, little diamond by the side of it and we can build these little details up in a little bit. Now we've got a triangle down the bottom so we can build that right the way down and you can see where on the guidelines it appears. So we've got that nice point coming all the way down. Now, his feet 
Godric Gryffindor's lion's feet. So I've done part of a rectangle there and then a triangle on the end. So again, I'm now going to do the pad of the foot. It's just inside this line. So I've done a little rectangle and then I'm doing two lines up which is the foot. So I want to do a rectangle for that pad as well, for that paw. And we'll build up the details on those in a moment. But you can see inside, you've got a V there on the edge of the shield. So now we've got his arm and it comes across this line. So I'm going to do a rectangle there and a little bit of a rectangle going up to his shoulder. Now, about two thirds of the way up, you've got his chest. We can do a rectangle coming down to the top of the Gryffindor name. Now, here, if we go up, you can see how we've got a bit of a triangle there. And that's the back of his mane coming all the way out. But I'm just going to add a little bit of a box on as well. And coming across the top, his head is not really quite that high. So I've gone up a little bit too high, but that's okay. So the head is there and we want his nose, which comes halfway across into this section in his mouth. So we've got a little rectangle there which is Gryffindor lion's mouth and then there's his chin coming across and yeah I'm just going to rub that line because that line is completely wrong so I'm getting rid of that one and this is the thing you use these shapes to actually put in your construction lines and it stops you from making mistakes so here I'm going to do a rectangle which is his mane coming down over the top of his chest and under his chin and then the top of his head and then we've got his nose and his eye is going to be about there and then coming off the back so we've got a bit of a triangle there and a well, you can see we've got a nice triangle there for his mane and that joins on that line at the back. That's better. So now here we go, we've got his tail here. So if we just draw an egg shape and then his tail comes down, you can draw a long rectangle and then a short rectangle that joins onto the back of his tail. And we've got that horizontal line coming across and now we can really start building the detail in because we've got the corner point of the crest and we've got that curve going up. We've got to curve it like we did here across inside that rectangle that we've put. So that's the top of the Gryffindor shield. And then again, we can follow that line inside We've got the curve coming round to the little shoulder of the shield. And then where we've got that straight line that we brought down, you want a little bit of a diagonal outside. And again, the same thing coming down. And we follow the curve coming right the way round up to the top. Bring that line down a little bit more. Now we've got his right paw on this side. We just want a nice big rectangle going all the way down. You can do a small one and a slightly bigger one coming down and that's his hand on that side. So again, we want that diagonal line for that shoulder to mirror that side. And then we just want a curve like the bottom part of a capital C. And again, we can draw in the construction line 
coming past this pore, coming down to the top of this pore. And again, on the outside, that is coming down and joining the circle that you put in. Now, that goes right the way down to the Gryffindor. Now, inside this line, we need to replicate the box, the curved box that we've got on the outside. But what we need to do is bring in that little point on the edge and the same on this side. So you've got a line that goes out and then you've got the point and it comes down to the bottom. And then you've got a slight diagonal for the box that the G is in. And that comes down inside the rectangle that you've done and it, outside the list, uh, the list, the side that's got the Gryffindor name badge on and if you can hear people going in and out that's my wife she's a piano teacher so if you check out youtube.com forward slash sharon bill she teaches piano and music theory and she's got all grades eight one to five abrsm up on there uh, with past papers and how to do the lot so if you don't always do music and music theory go check out sharon's channel but her pupils are coming for their lessons tonight as well so there's lots of noises going on. It's just because it's uh, summer and it's loud. That's why I've got the window open. So you might hear birds tweeting and kids playing outside. So again, back to this box. We've got that diagonal line now. Now what we want to do is put the G in. So again, we're just going to use simple shapes. So there's a rectangle. Rectangle going down underneath the line. And then up here... We want another little rectangle and then you've got a tiny one that's the G and we'll bring that line over and you can see you've got a curve like a C and then bring that line around as well and you can bring the edge of the G out and there's the outline for your G of Gryffindor now again here we want to follow the form of the top of the name badge. So I'm using the arc of my hand naturally to put in the construction line. Now again, over the top, we want to do the same of this guideline here. You can see how it starts underneath, comes over the top and then comes down just above there. And I've just curved. Now we want the outside line here and now we can see we've got lots of shapes that we can drop the letters in. So you can see here, it doesn't matter where you start, you can start in the middle, you can start at the edge. If you're right handed you might go across that way but I'm left handed so I'm going to start with this D here. So you can draw a very faint construction line for where the bottom of your letters are. Imagine a line in an exercise book. Well, that's what you're replicating. So there's the, the bottom where my letters are going to go. Now, the top of my letters are going to go the same following the line, following the kind of shape of the badge. And then the very tops of the letters are going to go just underneath the very top part. So I've got there three lines. You can do that one all the way across if you want, but you've only got the D and the two Fs. And the Y comes down underneath and the two Fs here. So you, again, draw a line just above what you know is going to be that black solid line. But now the D here, we've got a rectangle that goes across just slightly at an angle following the curve of the badge. So we've got, there's a rectangle. I'm going to do another rectangle and join it on the top and that's going to be my D just pull that in a little bit now the N is that I've got that line there I've got another rectangle and then another rectangle 
a slight angle going up and you've got little series come down this is these are done quite loose and fancy which is quite nice now the F is to the right of the center line but just slightly angled so again I've got another long rectangle and then I can do a little diagonal one down to the center line and a little one going off there now from the center line up above we've got a little rectangle there and that's the crossbar of the F now there's another little rectangle and that's going to be the top and we're going to have that curve coming down so you can see I'm just putting in different letters I'm not going from one side to the other because it's just about placing your characters so the I is there now I'm going to rub these out again because I was closer on the first one so yeah there's the rectangle for the eye that's quite simple and then we want a little diamond which is going to be the top part of it below the F and the I and then we've got a rectangle there for the N and the other side of the N and I was right at the first time and that's going to be the D little rectangle going down for the N now the O we can just do a nice simple box and we can fill that in and then another little rectangle box a rectangle inside and we can do the curve of the O afterwards same with the R and a little box there so you got door and now we're going to do the last F or the second the first F if you, as you go along And if you can hear those drums, that's Pete Bill. He's my oldest lad and he's a professional drummer. And again, I think you can check out Pete Bill, youtube.com forward slash Pete Bill, but he's on Twitter and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> and he's done some music for me as well that I've used in some of my time lapse videos in the past. So check out his channel as well. So there's another guide for that F. Now the R, there's a rectangle, there's a little box for the R going over it and that line goes over. Now we've got a V, a nice simple V and then we can bulk that up a little bit and then we can bring that line down to underneath the R. We've got another rectangle and that's all of the letters for Gryffindor. Now what we've got as well on this side is you've got diamonds all over the Gryffindor logo so we've got that center line there and then what we want is a little diamond that's going to go above his head there and a second one there now underneath the center line but kind of in line with that one we want another little diamond and then down in between this paw we've got another little diamond and all these spaces give you the shapes to make sure that everything fits you can just bring the angle of that down now we've got a diamond on the edge got a little triangle there and then you want like birds flying these little flourishes fleur de lis type things an upside down one now in this corner do a little diamond and then do a W and over the top you've got like a bird flying like an M a very curvy M now again right into the corner we can do a little thin diamond and then we want this is like a curvy capital E 
So you just do that E there and draw the line over. Now again here we want a W. Now in between here we've got a bigger diamond, another diamond there and then two smaller ones on the outside. Again up at the top we'll do a little triangle another triangle above it and then we want this large diamond going to the edge now again up in this corner we've got we can pull this over a bit so we've got the little diamond inside and then you've got a B you can see that's the edge of a capital B. Do the same inside and you can join that up on the end. Then you've got another W. Now we've got a little triangle there, another triangle, diamond. We'll do this corner flourish because this needs to come down. We can bring the inside down a bit better so that can come down more and we're starting to detail up the lines and actually give them more form so here we've got the diamond another B another W or like an upside down bird and then here we've got the other diamond that's coming down and you can see that's right next to the guideline now the tail is just think of a big C and then you can do that line down there the same coming down to the edge so here on this round bit we'll do this you've got a big capital C coming all the way around and then you follow that line in and just do a curl inside and you've got another C above it so there's another C and that's how you get that curve it goes out to the, the point the triangle and then off and down now we've got these other little flourishes inside so you've got another little diamond bird flying over the top replicate it inside join the diamond w up and you've got a diamond so now here you've got another little diamond inside another one there and another one which will be next to the back of Gryffindor lion. Now here you can see we've got this diamond pattern and you've got one line that comes right the way across but you can see how it's above that diamond you've just drawn and right up to that corner and it crosses the line there so this will be your first guideline. So you can just put that one in and you can see there's another one underneath the tail and that comes out just above there and then there's one here that goes right across that guideline and then right up in the corner and then you've got another one further up and that one ends so now we can start on that guideline and we can come down and then go up to join there and we know you can see there that the lion's mane is going to come inside that and you can do that triangle or create that diamond and then you've got the same down in the bottom so we can do that one going up that's just like a V and that goes up and across past the tail and goes up and joins the mane and then you can see there where that line goes up and makes an X and joins the back of the main 
and that'll go up to the back of the line. Now we've got to replicate that on this side. So just to the where his pore is on the guideline, you can come down and you can see there's a little cross there and it comes down to the side, just to the right of the guideline. Now again, we've got the line comes down and it comes just above where the end is roughly. But, so if we do that, and then you've got the other line will come up and we can just indicate where the chest of the Gryffindor line is going to be. And then we can bring that other line down. Now that is a pretty good solid. Oh, oh hang on. No, no, no. We've missed some bits down here. So now we need to bring that line down and we've got the V but we need to do that little like kind of lightning flash and that's where his paw is going to be but here we can see there's going to be a little diamond these are these little flourishes in the crest a W we've got a diamond at the bottom We've got a bird that joins on and then a bee or a bird the other way that joins on and then we've got the edge of the diamond going and you've got a little diamond that's just appearing there. And now we can start building up the detail with a felt tip pen. I've just noticed that I have missed a couple of bits so here opposite on the opposite side we've got this other flourish this kind of bit sticking out of the side of the shield so you just imagine this is like a P you got here a capital P so you've got this line coming down and then you're just going to do the like the round bit going around the outside but just carry it on and finish it inside as a spiral going in so there's your curve going round and then just carry it on or you could even start here and you've got a capital C or an E. Imagine like a, a, a big E, like a normal letter E that you do, not a capital. But you can just start from the inside and curve that round. And that's how you just do that spiral. Or you can just do it from that side all the way around. Then we've got up here, like I say, I've missed a couple of the little embellishments and the decorations. So there you've got a triangle, and we've got another triangle, and then we've got a diamond short point at the bottom long one going up to the top same underneath and then behind his tail we've got a little tri triangle and then the diamond going up to that corner point if we've missed anything else then we'll just kind of fill it in but we've got the cube boxy Gryffindor lion now we can kind of flesh it out with the pencil if you want but I'm just going to go straight in with the pen so you can see where we do uh, how you use the construction lines and what we do with the pen is just build up on top of everything because you're using all of these construction lines and the guidelines that are on originally as a kind of dot to dot but we've got Gryffindor's eye to start us with so there I've just done the points and have filled in his eye and then you can see we've got two little blobs there and his nose is going to come right to the edge now his forehead little step and down to his nose and we've got this little rectangle here that we put originally and so you can just draw a little curve underneath and join up to his nose and then he's got two massive great big fangs but here you've got a big capital C coming around so there's your C and you want to go out to the edge of his lip and then his chin comes down you've got a bit of a solid point and then that comes down underneath and then you want a V for his fang and then the second one on the outside and you can draw that down and then you've got the kind of crease lines on the side of his mouth and then little lines going up to his eye now here we've got where his mane comes up 
we're going to come out and we're just going to draw a line down where it comes to just above his eye and then the same joining up to his forehead now it flicks up and it just curves and comes back over but you've got that construction line follow it again little point joins down now just inside the center line you've got a little flick that comes around there and then here we've got like a C that comes down now right across this cross here you can see there's another little C so if you just put that in as a C first and then you can put that line down this will give you the guide where you can draw the curve down of his mane coming down over his chest so from that point now I'm just curving down just past his chin where his chest is and his mane again is going to come right out past his chest another line that follows that shape now his chest will come right down and that goes up inside and just trail off and that shows like the top of his mane coming down onto his chest so now from that line that you've got coming off from that corner point C you can see it curves a little bit and will come down to about a third point which is where we just underneath where we've got that construction line that we put in so which is the top of his arm here as well so you can see that's the top of where we've got this line for what would be his arm solid that's where that comes down and you can see it's a bit of a shape like a banana and then we've got nice and simple little V's coming down so there's one two and then just trail that line down and you can just look like little dab marks now here we've got this rectangle but we want his paw which is just above the center line so I've just done the curve of his paw coming out and then we want a nice big V for that claw and the same for the second one going out and then it comes back up to the knuckle and the top of his paw is level and then his arm kind of just goes up a little bit and then you've got these kind of fair lines and you can just put a couple of little dabs and there's four of those just gently dab with your pen and you can see how the lion shape is starting to really come together but you're using all of the guidelines that you've put down so now from this banana we've got his shoulder that needs to come across and so that's about a third it's about halfway down and you've got quite a dark bit in that and then we want a nice kind of leaf shape to a point and then we can put in those two lines there that just build up on his mane as well so now we're going to put in his back because we've got this diamond shape coming down and his back just curves out a little bit his shoulder and then the back curves and comes down to the right of that triangle and then start of his hindquarters just curve out and you've got one two three little lines now his chest we're going to do we're going to follow his paw over and then we've got right on the center line you've got this long point there and then you've got another one that just curves in and then another V and that's his arm and then from underneath this point you've got these little lines and that indicates the top part of his arm the back part of his arm going up to his shoulder but here we've got his chest coming down and we need to join that on underneath so that it's the same kind of line so imagine it goes through his arm 
and that's how you join it and make it fit together because if you did it there it'd be out or there it'd be out so you just make sure that the lines match as you come underneath and then we just want a few little marks there then you've got across that guideline and then a little couple of dabs on his claw so now we're going to finish off his mane coming out the back so coming off his back we've got that comes down and then you get another one going up and a point going in and a little dab and that's got a little point going up and then going into this triangle you've got a little curve that's a bit like a T so you've got a T and a line going across and then that goes up and you've got a long V here and that V goes up to not far off from that point as well that little C that you've got in the centre so now you can see there we've got an L you've got an L that comes across just a little curve in the corner and that comes down and joins the top of this C here and then you want two lines coming down and then off the bottom of that L you've got a little wobble and then the same with that point and now from inside here we've got two lines that come up and then another couple of dots and you can add your own if you want to but I'm just looking at the reference and just trying to replicate it so you can see how I've used the guidelines to build it up so now we've got this point that's going to come up and come above here so you just got a nice curve that comes down to that point and you can just wobble it a little bit and then you've got three lines two longer ones and a small one above and then you've got the back of his mane there a little point and then and there you can see the total mane that's just made up by following all of your little construction lines that were put in so now there I've just put in the center line of the shield right at the top and then there's a center line down here at the bottom now we're going to do his tail so you've got a big thick C there and you've got a big C coming around to a point there it's a bit like a paisley symbol if you see the pattern of paisley and then we want some lines inside to indicate his fur on his tail now we've got these little long rectangles very thin but they are square and we need to be curved so again just follow the line and just curve it slightly as it comes down for his tail and now we can do that center line on the shield and we can even just bob in those diamonds that you put the pencil lines in first very quickly and you can see the whole shape is starting to come together now we're going to do his feet so here we've got from the corner following the pencil line and then you've got the little rectangle come down but then go diagonal again and then wiggle over to the edge of his toes just go up a little bit and then go diagonal and over and come in and you've got that dot going up and then you've got the top of his paw and then you've got two little points which are his kind of claws and his feet and one little dot above now again we're going to replicate this on this side so we've got come down a little bit and then bend it round curve for his heel wiggle over to where your pencil line is and then you just want to go up a little bit and then before you get to the top of the box just curve over diagonally 
and then you can just wiggle that line under and there's lots of wiggly bits there and then you want little point and another little point for two claws now here as I say we missed out a little uh, pencil line but that doesn't matter because we've got all the other constructions so here we've got a V for inside the shield but we can do that little diamond and that's filled in on that part now you can see you've got his feet and you've got the diamond so now because we've got pretty much all of the lion in we're going to get the Gryffindor logo or should we leave that till the end no we'll do the Gryffindor logo so we're going to curve this over but you can see we've got a little V point going in there so if you put these in first then it's you can do it as you go along and um, we've got a little wiggle underneath that bottom line a little wiggle there a bit of an outside wiggle so wherever you've got the kind of torn parchment kind of effect just put those in so you've got a little V above the R and a little notch there so that's kind of quite, oh we've got the core we, the Gryffindor G is outside and you've got another little one there so what I'm going to do now is I'll start with the G and I'm doing nice thick lines you can see it's a bit woggly so I'm just putting a couple of little dents in as well and need to follow that a little bit the curve you don't go straight with your, your line and the rectangle that you put oh miss that little V coming down and then again I'm going to start on this side right to the edge but make sure your line is if it goes behind that because it should do isn't out of line the same as we did with Gryffindor lion's chest and we're going right out to that point come back in and then the curve just kind of woggle the line a little bit so as it isn't too flush and that gives it that kind of nice medieval parchmenty type look so now we want the line inside that's going to be around the Gryffindor and then coming down the edge got a little kink in and then we've got another little kink in and you can put your own in if you want we've got another one there come over another one there and so there you've got the actual shield for Gryffindor now I'm going to work because I'm left-handed I'm going to go that way if you're right-handed you'll go from the G and work over but now <clears throat> look at how the shape is so you, you're using the rectangles that you've drawn for all of your letters but you've got the R coming down you've got that slope on the top and then you've got the little kind of pointed flourish and then you want the edge and you can see how using the construction lines now you've got a, two little boxes for the O but it's curved so simply in the corner do the curve of the top of the O it's kind of like an italic letter and do the curve in the bottom and then just curve it round so here I'm doing a kind of C and then I'm doing the same inside and filling it in now there's little nodges on these as well that you can add if you want or little dance now the D the top of the D is just a little wiggly it's not straight so I've done the wiggle at the top and then followed that down and filled it in now again the D itself goes up 
out and it's a kind of a C shape. So just think, I've just done a big capital C there, fill the inside and then you can fill it in and put the kind of serif point on the bottom of the D. Now the N, I'm just following the curve over and then coming down, filling the inside and the serif is very curved. And the one on the back of the end is above it, but again, still curved and a nice slope on the top. And there you can see your end, and you see it just comes together real easily. So even if your construction lines can be a bit messy, when you actually add your ink, and this is what comic books used to be done, they used to be inked in. It all comes together quite nicely. There's your serif at the bottom. Now we just want a nice little diamond. Now the F. I've done the diagonal first. Now I'm doing, it's a bit of a, like a, a little C at the bottom. I've done the diagonal going up to the kick, but this is curved right the way over. So I'm just curving that nice and simply, bringing it down and then you've got the back of the F and there's your first F. Second F, now this is nice and pointy, a bit like a, just a, a very sharp point going down. I'm curving the F over and filling that top part in and then bringing down you've got more like a U at the bottom and I filled that in. Now the Y it's got a sloped serif they aren't straight and then I've just done that rectangle because you've got that nice chunky little bit missing out of it and I've done the same on this side and then the serif on the bottom just joining that up and now we want the R Again, slope on the back, serif, follow that curve round, and then you follow your pencil lines. Riffendor, now we've got the G. So here, I can really accentuate the angle of the serif, and we've got the G at the top, and it's a bit wider onto the serif than it is at the top. So you can see I've just filled that in a little bit more. And then the top of the G is angled, follow the curve as well. So the serif on the top part of the G and you've got a little bit missing. And the G at the bottom You've got a little bit that curves and comes past the front of the, the, the G going down. And that goes right the way down past the construction line. Now, here you've just got this curve that you've already put in that's just like a C. And you can just follow that nicely and fill it all in. And then the inside part, you can put a little ding dent in it and then fill it in nice and quickly and there you have Gryffindor and we've just got the last bit of the shield to do now we've not quite finished the lion I've missed his left paw off so because we've got everything else in that's a very very good help so what we're going to do is we're going to start up here above this construction line with his left paw and you can just 
woggle that out. It's a nice technical term for drawing woggling. And I'm just curving that line out to the pad of his paw underneath, just to the right of the construction line, and you go up. And then imagine you've got a little capital D here, but you don't put the back on. And that's that part of his claw. And then you just join that up at the top and you've got one, two, three, and then we can bring his arm down. It just curves his forearm. We can thicken that up and you've got one, two little points down there. And then I hope my drummer son's kicking off again. He's got lots of gigs, so he has to rehearse and practice. So now we do have the Gryffindor lion completed. And now we can do the background details and these will be really quick, which is just nice. So you, if you follow your lines all the way around and just do the edges of the shield, you can either do it nice and neat if you want, but this is all nice and rustic and medieval. You know, imagine going to a castle, it's not going to be pristine like going to Ikea or a posh shopping center or shopping mall. So there's your point. And again, I'm just filling these bits in as we go along. So here on this head bit, you've got a big capital D and just finish it off and keep curving in. And you can make some bits thicker. So up on this corner, you've got a little point going up and that goes out and then all the way down. Now here we've got it's like the bottom part of a C. So imagine you've got a big capital C, but you can just fill that in and that matches the same kind of line there. So now I'm going to go and curve across. I'm just wiggling the line a little bit and the same from just outside the guideline to the point on that side and then this side it curves down and comes up to the point of the shoulder of the shield and then it goes out to that point on the edge. Now again this one mirrors it but it's got it's got a couple of little extra wiggles in there and you can do as many as you want. Now again behind his tail we want the shield line to match so woggle and come down and make sure it matches it comes down and joins the top of the Gryffindor. So now this edge, the circle on the side of the shield, you do the C and you just keep it going as a spiral. Just adding some little woggly bits on and then again the outside line going down and then you've got this little point going out. Now we want to do the shield at the bottom. Woggle with a kink down to a V and then you've got a big V going down right to the bottom point. Little kink there. Up. Now you've got a, like a big tick really. And so that's the edge part and we want He's coming off from the center of his foot. That's that top part as well. Now we can start filling in all the little flourishy bits. Now I'm going to, I'm going to start in this corner and I'm going to work my way around. And so I'm following the lines. There's the W, the bottom of that V. And there's that capital E. So now we've got a diamond, triangle, little triangle, diamond. These are your birds to that little flourish. These are all heraldic kind of flourishes that go in. There's the diamond and a triangle. If you look at lots of coat of arms, you'll see lots of variations of flowers and birds and feathers, plants, animals. And that's what J.K. Rowling did, is just adapt 
heralds from the past and insignia from the past and develop them for Hogwarts and the houses within the school, which is very, very, very clever. So there's that edge and we've got this kind of little diamond there and a couple of little dots inside and then we've got that kind of point that comes off. So this one here we've got the outside of a B coming down and then that goes up to that point and the bottom one goes down to a V and then we can just do that E and join that and then we've got that diamond point there and then here we have that kind of diamond point that comes down behind his right paw now here we've got the top of that diamond and we've got a W diamond bird or an M, little triangle, diamond, W, diamond, then we've got the B, then we've got another diamond, and these are just repeat patterns all the way around. Then we've got the bird, diamond, going to a B and then a really long one filling that up diamond triangle little triangle and then a bigger diamond and then we've just got the bits inside the quarters of the shield so we've got these little diamonds that we've put in there's the fourth and then we can just wiggle these lines don't do these lines nice and straight so I'm purposefully just wiggling them that might have been a little bit too much now again I've got the kind of a straight line on this side but I'm just wiggling the pen as I go down and it just makes it look rustic and old And then I got that line again. The line behind his tail needs to match. And then that one goes up there. And again, that line needs to match as it goes up. And that all completed in is the Gryffindor crest. And I'm just going to rub out now the construction lines from inside and you can colour it in, you can use felt tips, watercolours, pencil crayons, wax crayons, paint or you can just have fun with the pen and ink but this should nicely clean up I'm using a big plastic eraser to rub out all of these pencil lines that I've put down and as I said before I put the pencil lines down the construction lines quite dark so that you can see them because I want you to see what I'm doing but you can put them down nice and lightly so that it doesn't obscure your drawing that goes down on top because the pencil when you put colour on if you put in light colours on especially will disrupt your colours so there we go cleaning off the bits of eraser that are left on and there we have Godric Gryffindor's crest for the Hogwarts house I've really enjoyed that. I hope you have too. Like and subscribe to be kept up to date with new how to draw videos. And the next one will be Slytherin in the series of uh, Hogwarts crests. Anyway, hope you've had fun. I have. Take care and enjoy your drawing. Ta-da.